Hey everyone, this is Blendmaster here, and happy Easter to all of you. Today I'm going to show you how to create a cool Easter themed scene inside of Blender. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is change the name of our scene to Egg Textures, because in this scene we're just going to create two different textures for our eggs, Easter eggs. And if you want, you can look at some references so you can create your own textures. I'm just going to show you how to make two simple textures here. So now I'm just going to delete our cube and our lamp, and I'll go to Top View Orthographic. I'm going to align our camera to View by pressing Control alt 0 And then with the camera selected, I'll press Alt-G so it's in the center of our scene, and I'll move it up on the Z-axis by 10. Now I'm just going to change the resolution to 1920 by 1920 so we can get a square image. After that, I'm going to add a plane. I'll tap into Edit Mode. Edit mode and move it over here and we're going to add a mirror modifier to this and we'll check X and Y so that it reflects over both the X and Y axis and this way we can create a seamless texture or somewhat seamless texture. I'm just going to enable clipping I'm going to move our plane over here and scale it on the Y axis like that maybe drag it out and make it a little thicker Okay, and that's looking good. Now you can just position, play with this and position it where you want. I'm just going to move this over a little bit like that. Move it up. And then move this there. Move it down. And actually I'm just going to duplicate it a couple of times first. Like that. Okay, and then I'll just select these and move them up. Okay, and I think I'll select everything and drag it down to here, and then duplicate it and move it on the Y axis. And now I'm just going to press S and Y to scale it on the Y axis. I'll type negative 1 so it's basically flipped. Okay and then I'll duplicate it one more time whoops actually I might just delete it okay and then I'm just gonna move these both up a little or scale it up on the y-axis a little and then move it scale on the, or drag it out on the X. All right, that's looking fine. Okay, now I'm just going to add a circle, and we want to uncheck clipping, so that way we can move it here without it getting clipped. And I'll just enable clipping again, fill it, and I'm going to scale this down, and duplicate it on the X axis, and do that again. Okay. And then I'll select one of the vertices, press Control L so it selects everything connected, and duplicate it down here. And what we want to do here is drag it down so that this vertice is on the x-axis, and it'll be like a sphere, just like that, or a circle. Now I'll duplicate this along the x-axis again. Okay, then I'll do the same thing here with the y-axis. And that's looking good. Okay, I think I need to duplicate these one more time up here. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to switch over to Cycles Render. I'm going to open up a node editor. Okay, give it a new material. And this one I'll just name Dots. And I'm going to add another material and name this Lines. And if we go into edit mode, I'm just going to select a vertice from each of the lines, press Control L, and assign it to this one. And I'll select a vertice from each of the dots, press Control L, and assign it to that. Okay, now I'll open up this preview, switch the shading from uh, diffuse to emission. I'm just going to give this a 
light purple color so I'll just give it a purple color like that and then bring up the green so it's lighter and for the lines I'm gonna switch it to emission also and give this a light blue color so maybe something like that and we can render this image out and there we have a nice egg texture but what I'm gonna do is change our background color to black and I'm actually going to come down here to the film tab and check transparent now I'm just gonna render out that image again and you can save it by pressing F3 just create a new directory and save it as egg texture one okay now we'll go to a second layer and create another texture this time I'm going to start with the circle I'll fill it and move it over here in edit mode and add another modifier mirror modifier X and Y and I'm just going to move it over here and we want to make sure that this uh, middle vertice is here on the camera border so that it tiles perfectly when we um, map the texture to our sphere. So now I'm just going to select it and scale it down and move it up. And I'll duplicate it and scale it really down. And then I'll duplicate it one more time and scale it up like that. And I might just position these a little differently. Scale that one down a little bit. And then I'll just hit apply. And now you can select one of these circles and just duplicate them randomly around their scene right here. And just scale it up, scale it down. If you want, you can scale it on the X axis and the Y axis so you can get them a little distorted. I'm just going to keep it like this. And I'm trying not to get anything on the edge up here because when we map our texture to our egg, then the top will be colored, and I don't want that. So just keep uh, what you uh, keep uh, the final image in mind, so you know what to expect, and you can make sure that you don't mess up. Okay. I think that's good. I might just scale a couple of these down and duplicate or scale duplicate it and add another one. Like that. Whoops. Scale it up. Okay. So I think that's looking good. Now I'm just gonna add another material and call it dots two. Switch it to emission and in the node editor we're going to add a color ramp and we want to have this so that each of these have random color so we're going to add a input object info node and bring in the random output and put it in the factor of our color ramp and right now if you go into rendered view you'll see it's all the same color and that's because it's one object so we need to tab into edit mode select everything and press P so that we can separate it by loose parts and you want to make sure that the border uh, the opposites are the same so just select both of those and combine them by pressing control J because otherwise they would have different colors and when you tile it it wouldn't match so just select both of them while holding shift and press control J so that you can make them the same object and they'll have the same color and I'm just going to select everything by pressing A and come down here to change whoops, change the origin to geometry now if we go into rendered view you can see that they all have a random different color from the color ramp and the ones on opposite sides are always the same color which is exactly what we want now I'm going to switch the blend type from linear to constant I'm going to set this black color to red then I'll make an orange I'll add the yellow, the green, oops, 
a light blue, a purple, and a pink. So make that one, I guess. Okay, and I'll just delete that one there. And now you can space these uh, as big or as small as you want. It's to your own preference. The bigger the section of the color is, the more likely you'll have that color appear in your dots. So I don't want much of the red, yellow, and orange. So I'll just make those areas smaller. I'm just increasing the size of the blue, green, and pink. I think I have too much blue here, so I'm just going to shrink that down a little. Okay, shrink the green, pink, purple, like that. Okay, and I think that's looking good. But right now it's a little too vibrant, so I'm going to add in a hue saturation node and bring the saturation down to 0.9 that's looking a lot better for Easter egg so I'm just gonna go back to solid view and render this out and I'll just save it as egg texture 2 I'm just gonna save our file really quickly and I'll save it as Easter okay and now we're gonna open up a new scene I'll just leave it named scene and I'm going to add in a plane really quickly and scale it up by 10 and this is going to be our wood floor so I'm just going to name it floor and I'll give switch over to cycles render give it a new material and call it wood floor and we'll create the material right now I'm just going to add a mix shader a glossy shader and bring in our texture input or texture image texture and use the UV coordinates plug it in and you can use any seamless wood texture that you want I'm just going to use the one that I um, created for my tutorial if you want you can watch that tutorial I'll put the link in the description below so that and I'm going to add in a hue saturation node and bring down the saturation on this glossy node to 0.75 okay I think that's good I'll come to front view I'm going to add a camera set the camera up right now press ctrl alt 0 alt g to center it and I'm just going to move it back out and right there I think is good and I might tilt it up on the x-axis a little bit because I want it to be looking up and I'm gonna add a HDR image yeah, and it's just a picture of a kitchen but I'm gonna change the ray visibility and uncheck camera and under film settings again I'm gonna check transparent so that our background is transparent. Okay, I'm gonna open up our UV image editor. Open up our wood tiles image, and then just press U, project from view, and scale that up by a hundred. And if we go to textured view, we should be able to see our or rendered view we can see our wood tiles that's looking okay I'm just gonna drag these out a little bit and I'm gonna add in a light or a plane rotate it by 40 negative 45 degrees scale it up by 5 I'm just gonna position it right there and rotate it and duplicate it rotate it and scale it down and this is going to be our light so I'm just going to name it the material light give it an emission shader of pure white 
and a value of 2.5. I'll give this the same material. And I'm just going to name the lights light 1 and light 2 so everything's organized. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to add some bump to this floor so that it looks a little more realistic. I'm just going to put in a emission shader right now so we can see what it looks like, our texture. I'm going to add in a color ramp. And I'm going to increase this contrast. So just slide this in like that. And then slide this in. Okay. I think that's good. And I'm just going to add a one in the middle and change this to pure white. And add another one and change this to pure black. And that'll just add a lot more contrast in the middle of our lines here. If you scroll in you can see it goes black, white, black, white and that'll just make our bump a lot more interesting. So drag those in. Okay. Now I'm just going to connect this to a mix RGB node. Set the factor to 1 and set it to multiply. Just decrease it and plug this into our displacement and set our shader back. We can take a look. I think we might want to increase this and drag these out a little more. And actually I think I might want to invert the colors like that so it's digging in and you can see that in the preview and that's just gonna help with our image overall to make it look a lot nicer I'm gonna decrease the bump now to about there and now I'm just gonna play around a little bit with the color so add in an RGB curve right there whoops just had it or whatever. Okay, plug it in there. And plug it in here. I just want to increase our reds slightly. Then increase our green and our blue. And I think that's looking a lot better. Okay, I think that's good. Just a little more and I'm going to plug this into our color ramp node instead and let's see if that makes a difference yep and it does it's a big difference so I'm just going to play these settings some more drag that back drag this in a little more like that okay now let's see what our displacement looks like. I think I'll add a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, now what we want to do is create our text. I'm just going to save again. And now I'm going to go to our second layer here and add our text but I'm just gonna center our cursor by pressing shift s and adding our text and I'm gonna change our font to Arial you can change it to any font you want to make it more interesting and I'm just gonna type happy in all caps Whoops. and then duplicate it move it down on the y-axis and type Easter whoops can't spell today okay and I'll just rotate these both on the x-axis by 90 I'm gonna add a extrusion to both of them 0.1 and I want a slight lip on this whoops so I'm just gonna 
change the depth of this to 0 0.005 and that's looking good so I'll do that for this one too and it's looking pretty good so I'm just gonna duplicate this and move this down here just in case I mess something up and I'll convert both of these to a mesh by pressing Alt C and I'll join them together yep I did mess up I wanna delete this duplicate these both back to the second layer and what I wanna do with this one first actually is play with the spacing so it's equally spread out so to do that I'm just gonna scroll down here to paragraph and change the spacing of the letter and increase it so that this is lined up with that or this edge is lined up with the edge of that R so I'm just gonna play with that a little bit and that's looking good so now I'm just gonna move this down position it right there so it's on top okay I'll just delete both of these because we don't need it and I'll duplicate these ones and move them down there now I'll convert it to a mesh and combine them by pressing control J just gonna set the origin to the 3d cursor or not origin to geometry press alt G whoops and move this up on the Z axis so it's just on the bottom of the floor okay select both layers go to our camera view I'm gonna move this on the Y axis so it's close move it here actually I'm gonna move it back there move it a little bit so it's centered and set the origin to the 3d cursor now I will move it closer to our camera right about there and I will scale it down to here okay that's looking good now I'll set up its material it's gonna be a fairly simple material and I'll just name it text I'm gonna come down here add a mix shader and a glossy shader I'm going to keep this glossy at 0.2 I'm going to add in a RGB node and a Q saturation node plug this in here plug it there set the saturation to 0.75 and I'm going to give this a nice pink color right there that looks about good and actually I'm going to change the roughness of our glossy to 0.5 okay I'm just gonna go into rendered view and I think that's too much roughness bring that back to 0.2 but I'm gonna change this factor to 0.2 and that's looking pretty good I might bring the saturation to 0.5 also and make this a lighter pink or, yep that's looking pretty nice okay now what we're gonna do is create the eggs so let's head over to the third layer and I'm just gonna add a sphere and I'm gonna divide both the segments and rings by two and this is just gonna make our UV mapping easier and in edit mode I'm just gonna press O to enable proportional editing then press G and Z to move it up like this so that we can get our egg shape if you press control 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier and change the shading to smooth you can see we're getting a nice egg okay I'm just gonna bring that point down a little bit and then bring up the entire egg and I think that's looking good okay I'm just gonna open up a small window here change it to our 3d view go to camera view and I'm gonna keep this in our rendered setting so we can see it 
Okay. So this is going to be our egg, and we're going to UV unwrap this first so that it'll be easier for when we duplicate it. I'm just going to tab into edit mode, press alt and right click to select this line of vertices, and press control E and mark seam. And I'm going to select this ring and con press control E and mark the seam. And then I'll do the same with this ring down here. And I'll just select everything and press U unwrap and you can see that it's really messy I'm just going to select both of these press control L to select everything scale it down and just press P so that it's locked in place there and I'm going to select this scale it on the Y axis by 0 so it's flat press P select the bottom ring scale it on the Y axis by 0 press P select this scale it on X and 0 and then press P and do the same with this side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna select everything again and unwrap it. We're gonna do the same thing with all of these scale Y by zero, move it up, and scale Y by zero and move it up, scale Y zero, move it up, and just keep on doing it for all of these. And you can see if we had kept our segments the same, whoops, if we had kept our segments as high as they were before at 32 and 16 or something, it would have taken a lot longer to do this. And now what you want to do is scale it on the x axis for these rings by zero and just position it. So I'm just going to pause the recording right now so you won't have to see me do all of this. Alright, that didn't take that long, so I have all of these um, UV mapped. I'm just going to move it over here. And now what we want to do is make sure all of these are equally spaced squares. So I'm just going to move this on the x-axis here, and move this one on the y to create a square like that. And I'll just unselect everything, press B to box select those, and just move them down by pressing G and Y. And then shift alt right click to unselect that and gy and do this so that we can create all even squares like that. Whoops. Gy. And now we're going to do the same thing but for the x. So press it gx, make a square, gx, then gx and I'll pause the recording again and come back when I'm done. Okay, so I finished making these all perfect squares and I'm just gonna select all of them and move it here and just scale it up. And I will save. Now we're gonna create our material. I'll name this egg one. Tab out of edit mode. And this is going to be just simply a diffuse shader and a glossy shader, I believe. And I'm just going to bring this factor to point 2 and bring this roughness to point 5. And actually, I'm going to duplicate this mix shader and add a translucent shader. If I can find it there make it pure white just plug it into the bottom again and for this I'm going to add for the color I'm going to add an RGB node and a color hue saturation plug this into the glossy and then the original into the diffuse and I'll go with a yellow egg so just make that a bright yellow color and I'm going to move this back up here, duplicate our mix shader, and duplicate our diffuse shader. Just going to move this on top. And for the second diffuse, we're going to put in our texture. And because it has an alpha channel, we can overlay the texture onto the color of our egg. So just open up our texture, 
gonna add texture coordinate set it to UV and immediately you can see that we're getting a nice UV wrapped texture on our egg and that's looking pretty nice and if you want you can scale this up so you can get more of the texture or you can scale it down so it's smaller like that I think it's fine like this I might scale it up on the Y or scale it down yeah I think I'm gonna scale it down a little bit or scale it up but you can scale it up scale it down to whatever you like and I think that's looking pretty good so that's it for our egg material now I'm just going to open up our three layers go to our camera view and I am going to actually go to front view first move this up so that the bottom is exactly there or even better I'm just gonna select our bottom point in edit mode press shift s cursor to selected and then set the origin to the 3d cursor okay now I'll just move this in front of our text right there and I will scale this down okay if you look here you can see we have our first egg and that's looking pretty good okay and you can duplicate this as many times as you want I'm gonna duplicate it here scale it down maybe and rotate it like that duplicate it again maybe move this one forward and then I'll just rotate it so it's on the ground like that but then you have to make sure that you position it correctly again Oops. okay maybe tilt it towards the camera duplicate another one behind it scale it up maybe whoops 1.2 just so it's slightly bigger and I have to move it up again and if we look here you can see what it's looking like and I actually like that so I'll duplicate this one more time over here next to the R and I'll scale this up by 1.5 so it's pretty big and yep I think I'll just duplicate this here because it looks pretty empty right there I'm going to scale it down rotate it towards the camera or no actually I'm going to duplicate it move it back rotate it that way and scale it up by 1.2 and put it there I'm just going to rotate this towards it like that and just position it right where you want it you don't have to position the eggs exactly here. You can position it anywhere you want it. You can move it closer to the camera, farther away. It doesn't have to be exact. And wherever you feel that it's empty, you can add more eggs. So like right here, I feel it's empty, so I'm just going to duplicate it. Scale it down. Maybe there will be a small egg rotate it so it's lying down like that okay and then I'll just move it closer oops move it over there and I think that's looking pretty good so now I'm just going to go to our camera view 
And if you want, you can leave these all yellow. Or what I'm going to do instead is select them and give them each a different material. By pressing this number, it'll create the material for itself. And that way, we can change the color of each of these. Which one? This one still has the same. Okay. So now they're all different, and we can change the colors to have different color eggs. So this one, I think I'll keep yellow. This one, I'll make white. Okay. Maybe blue. This one could be pink. You can really play around with any of the colors that you want. Just experiment with what colors look good together, and you can create a really cool looking Easter scene. I think this pink is a little too strong, so I'm going to change it so that it'll be lighter, like that. Okay. This blue is too strong. Just move it over, play around with the settings, maybe make it slightly greenish tint. Okay. And you don't want to really go too saturated with the colors because I don't think it looks that good when it's saturated. It starts to look really artificial. So that's looking good. I suppose. I'm just gonna change these two colors. Maybe make it red and orange. Yep, that looks good. This blue still looks a little weird to me. So I might make it a dark blue instead. Uh, Actually, I'm just going to keep it right there. Whoops. Change it like that. Point 0.5. Maybe point 0.2. Yep, I think that looks good. So I'll just leave it like that right now. So, so far we've got in our text our wood floor and our Easter eggs done. Next, we'll create a background, because right now there's no background. So I'm just going to open up a new scene, and we'll label this background. And I'll go to Top View, Orthographic, and here we will add our camera. Press Control alt 0 to snap it to View, Alt-G to center it and then move it up on the z-axis by 10. I'm going to make sure our cursor is centered and I'll just save just in case. And now what we want to do is change our setting first from Blender to Cycle and I am going to make this black the background color. I'm going to add a plane, scale it up and we will name this material yellow. And it'll simply be a emission shader that's bright yellow. And then I will duplicate this plane and move it up on the z-axis to right about there. Change the material. To, actually I'll just give it the same light material we had before. And I will duplicate it again. Rotate it by 45. And position it right there. We want to make sure that our ray visibility settings we have camera unchecked. Okay, now we can go to rendered view and see it like this. I'm just going to add in a icosphere, set the subdivisions to 2, and set it to smooth shading. And now I will add a displacement modifier, give it a new texture, change the coordinates to object and we'll add an empty and we'll select that empty here okay you can play with the strength value I don't know 
how abstract you want your background to be but I'm just gonna change it to maybe five that looks good and then I'll duplicate our subsurf modifier and move it down I'm just gonna collapse it so it's smaller like that and that's looking good I'm just gonna move these planes farther back move this up and I think I moved it too far back. Let's just move it there. And that's looking good. So now we'll set up our material. Just name it explosion or background. Okay. And this is going to be another just simple diffuse and glossy shader. So input mix shader. And then glossy shader and actually I think we can just change the material to our text material and I'm just going to duplicate this and then name it background and I'll just change the roughness from point 0.2 to point 0.5 and yeah, I'll just leave it like that. And now what we want to do is just scale this down and position it randomly around our scene. Duplicate, scale it up, scale it down, whatever you want to create some randomness in our background. And if you want, you can also tab into edit mode, enable proportional editing, and stretch these to create some other abstract shapes like this. And then scale it down duplicate scale down and you just want to make sure that it's the scene is nice and full doesn't have a lot of empty spaces so I'm just going to position some right here scale that up scale this one down maybe duplicate one right there here I'll add one and yeah that's looking pretty good so go to rendered view Okay, so I'll come over to our render settings. I'm just going to increase the samples to 100. And make sure our tiles are low because I'm using CPU. So 16 by 16. For GPU, you want to make sure your tiles are bigger. This will just render out really quickly. I'll save. And after this is done we'll go back to our scene and we'll create a little chicken for our easter egg card image I'm just gonna pause it right now and I'll come back when it's done rendering okay so our image is done rendering I'll just save that and open up our file and save it as background now we'll head over back to our scene and I'm just going to quickly render this out. I think it's at 10 samples. That's good. Change the tiles to 16. It's almost done rendering. Now we'll head over to the compositor. Make sure we're in the scene tab. Use nodes, background. And I'm just going to position these like that. Press Control, Shift, and left click to bring up a viewer node. And I will add a image open up our background press shift A to add alpha over node and we will add our image like that flip it and there now we have a nice background for our scene so I'm just going to blur this because right now it doesn't look nice when it's really solid so I'm just going to set it to fast Gaussian relative 10 by 10 Okay duplicate it and set it to 5 by 5 whoops 5 by 5 and I'll duplicate it one more time and set it to 1 by 1 this time okay now I'm gonna add a mix node make sure the factor is 0.5 
And we're gonna mix all of these. Okay. I think that's good. And now we'll just plug this into our alpha over node. And that's looking pretty nice. So I'm just gonna select our blur and mix nodes and press Ctrl G to make it a group. I'll just name it blur. Okay, that's looking good. If you want, you can add an RGB curve and play with the settings and colors. I might increase the reds a little bit. And then increase or decrease the greens and the blue. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to plug this into our composite node, save, and go back to our scene. So now what we want to do whoops now what we want to do is create our chicken so this isn't going to be very detailed because I want it to be inside of our egg uh, and like just looking right here I want this egg to be cracked and it to look like the chickens coming out so I'm just gonna make the body of it I'm gonna add a UV sphere tab into edit mode and scale it up on the z-axis like that Press Ctrl 2 to add subsurf and this, uh, set the shading to smooth. And I will give it a material, name it body. And this will be just a diffuse and mix shade, a glossy shader. Like that and I will change the roughness to 0.5 and the factor to 0.2 give it a bright yellow color because I want to have a yellow chick and just make the glossiness a slight yellow color and we're going to add some hair to this so create a new material for the hair or actually delete that and duplicate our body material and then change it to hair and we're just going to pull this back, duplicate our mix shader, and add a translucent shader. And I'm just going to copy this yellow color to our translucent shader and decrease the saturation some more like that. Okay, so I think that's good. I'll save. And now we'll create the hair. So let's add a particle system, switch it to hair and immediately you can see that's way too much hair so let's bring down the hair length to 0.1 and that's good I want to add some children to this so we'll set it to simple and I think that's good we can play around with these set settings nope I'll leave it like that and I want to change the material to 2 because right now it'll just be our glossy material and it won't look really good but if we set it to the second material it'll have some translucency and look better okay and play around with these values I'm just going to go into our particle edit mode and you can actually comb the hair like this so that it'll look sort of wet and like it's just coming out of the egg hatching okay and it doesn't have to be perfect go to object mode and yeah that doesn't look good at all so just come up here and free edit and I think I'll just leave it like that should be fine oh I know what I did wrong I have to change this factor to 0.75 so it's more translucent and I'll bring this saturation down a lot more and that's looking a lot better you can see that the hair is shiny that's looking good okay now we want to add some eyes to our little chick and I'm just going to append my eyes from an old project I had so if I can find it 
guess not. And I'll put a link in the description to the tutorial if you want, or you can create your own eyes. But I'm just going to use these same eyes for the simplicity and easiness for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, just going to go to camera view. And I have to change the material for this eye, I think. Yeah, I don't need this image texture. So just delete that. Okay, that should look better. I'm also going to change our UV map of this iris. Just go to textured view so I can see. Select our lens material and hide it so we can actually see our texture. Just scale it down like that. And that's looking good. Yep. Okay. Now you can make the eyes as big as you want or as small as you want to make it look cuter. I think I'm just going to keep the eyes a little bit bigger. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'll create the beak. And to do that, I'm just going to add a plane and I will move that over here and I'll just select these two faces or actually I will add a loop cut right here scale that in slightly and press W merge merge at center okay nope that's not what I wanted to do add a loop cut here first and then merge it so that way we can select these and drag it up like that. Okay, just select those two and drag it up. And drag that up slightly. Then select everything and do not duplicate. Extrude it. Scale it on the Y or the Z axis by zero. Just bring that down and back and if we add a subsurf modifier and a smooth shading should look good and I'm just going to select this here that crease and press control B to bevel it so that it will be sharper more like a beak and that's looking pretty good I just I'm just going to select these two faces back here and extrude them out a little bit like that. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to scale this down 0.5 maybe and position it right on our chick like that. Okay, that might be a little too big so you can scale it down. Let's take a look here maybe rotate it no. scale that down or I'm going to tap into edit mode and scale it on the z-axis like that and then scale it down okay so that's looking good now I'll give it a new material label it beak and this one will be a diffuse shader and glossy shader again and I'm just going to change this color to a nice orange color that and copy it and I'm going to bring down the saturation to 0.5 bring up the roughness to 0.5 okay this is looking pretty good but I'm just going to duplicate it again and make this maybe zero I'm gonna add a for now mode 
So input for now, or actually layer weight node, change it to 0 0.02, and I'm going to add a color ramp. And just move this back. If we add a emission shader, we can actually see what it looks like. Okay, so if we look down here, we can see that's what we're affecting, or that's where the glossy is going to be. So I'm just going to drag it down like that and increase the strength. Maybe change it from for now to phasing or facing. Nope, I think I'll keep it as a for now. And just plug this into our factor. And that should be good. I'm just going to bring the saturation all the way down to zero so it will be pure white. And I don't know if that did much, but I'm just going to keep it like that. And that's looking good. Okay. Now what we're going to do are actually... I think our iris is a little too dark so I'm gonna come over here to our material and add a hue saturation node and bring the value up to 5 and immediately you can see our eyes are a lot brighter okay so now I'm just gonna add a empty now label it chick label this our beak body and eyes. I'm just going to select all of them. Might be easier to select it from here. And select the chick class, the empty, and press control P, object, keep transform. And I will select our body again. And under the modifier settings, I'm just going to hide our hair from the camera view for now just so that it speeds up our viewport okay I'll save it right now and open up all our layers and we can see we have to scale down our chick a lot so I'm just gonna bring whoops select our empty bring it up here and we want it in this egg so we have to scale it down put it there scale down and position it right about there I believe will be good might have to scale down some more so I'll just scale it down like that or I'll bring it up like that I think that'll look good okay so I'm just positioning it right there and I'm gonna save now what we have to do is crack our egg and make it look like it's hatching from the egg so to do that I'm just gonna move this egg to our fifth layer and open up the fourth layer with it I'm just gonna hide our chicken everything right now so select everything and hide it and we want to select the vertices here everything but that so we're gonna press select it by pressing alt and right clicking and then press ctrl i to inverse the selection and hide it and now we're going to go to front view press select random move it up on the z-axis, select random, move it down, and then I'm just going to do it in wireframe. And you can select specific vertices that you want to move individually, like that. Okay. Move that up a little more. Down. And then unhide everything and I will just select everything above that and press P to make it a separate selection. Now I'm just going to select this 
open up our properties tab by pressing N and give it a mean crease of one. Whoops. And we need to select each of these edges here. So just select all of those. And we'll set the mean crease to one again. Now you can see we have a nice sharp crack. We're going to do the same thing here. So I'm just actually going to press B and box select all of that. Or I will go to vertex select and ring select both of those and then switch it to that and then unselect that top ring. And I will set the mean crease to one again. And there we have a nice crack in our shell, sharp crack. And if we unhide everything, we can select this top half and move it up. And I will just unhide our hair. And you can see, because we scaled it down, we're going to have to uh, shrink the size of this a lot. So, 0 0.01 for that. We're going to have to bring this radius down to maybe 0 0.01 as well. Yep, and then I'll just select this cap and bring it down to about there. Maybe rotate it a little bit. First I'm going to set the origin to, I'm going to select this top vertice. Shift S cursor to selected, origin to 3D cursor, and then I can rotate it. Whoops. Rotate and just position it right where I want it. So right there, that's looking good. And I'm just going to parent our egg to our chick by selecting both of them and the chick last and pressing Control p Object, Keep, Transform. So now we can move this around and it's looking good. But we need to move our chicken and everything up. I'm just going to unhide our hair because it's slowing down again. And select our chicken and beak and the head and move that up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now I am just going to open up all our layers, select our chick empty, and rotate it on the Z axis. Just position it right there. And that's looking pretty good, I think. Yep. If you want, you can keep this texture on it, or you can just completely get rid of that texture. And is it selected? Yep. Just take this diffuse and put it into here. And then you'd have a nice white egg. I think I'll keep it, though, because it looks kind of nice. And what you can do is come to these other eggs and change the texture to that other egg texture that we made. And it should have different patterns. So we'll tab into edit mode. And if we come over here, is it in edit mode? Oh, well, you have to select everything. And you can play around with the UV map to get a different look. Okay, I'm just going to scale it up like that. It's looking good. I might change this one to the other texture. And then position the UV map. So scale it up to something, or scale it down if you want to, to get some big dots. I'm just going to scale this up right about there and then scale it up on the Y. Okay, and that's looking pretty decent. And I think that's pretty much it. 
So now all we have to do is render this out. So I'm going to close these tabs, close this one here, and save it. And I'm just going to come over here and set our samples to 100 and make sure our tiles are 16 by 16. And I'm just going to render this. So I'll pause the recording now and see you guys when it's done. Okay, so our image is done rendering and I'm very pleased with our result except the hair on our chicken is a little messed up so I'm gonna fix that really quickly come over here to our chicken and I will have to change this color I'm gonna make it more yellow because it looked a little too white when we rendered it out I'm gonna unhide it okay and it should be fine. I'm just going to play around with these settings a little bit. And let's just box render this. I think I'll just render it out quickly to see if it's fixed or if... Yeah, for some reason it's a little weird right there not sure why so I will play around with these settings some more basically it's trial and error I guess I might have to increase the number of hairs because it seems like it's missing there so I will just increase this to maybe 2,000 and hopefully it fixes that. Uh, it still appears to be missing hair in part of that area. Let's just try rendering it again. and that's looking better if you wanted you could comb the hair in that area to make it look better and our chick looks really dark like that so I'm gonna increase our color of our translucency maybe that'll change it or actually I'm going to decrease our factor and then decrease the saturation a little bit. Uh, guess that's looking fine. I want it to be a little bit brighter though, so I'm just going to increase the value of this decrease the saturation change the factor to 0.5 and render it okay that's looking a lot better in my opinion so I will just come over here and increase it to 2500 and I think that should get rid of that spot right there if it doesn't, I'm not sure. I wasn't having this problem before when I tried recording. And that fixed it. So I guess I just need to increase the amount of hair particles I was using. So that's looking pretty good, but the beak I think is a little small. So I'm just going to select that beak. Okay, scale it up to maybe like that and I think that's looking good so I'll just unhide this hair again and I'll select this all by pressing control B save and I'll render and come back when it's done one thing I forgot to do was add our depth of field so I'm just going to quickly do that I'm going to select our camera here come over to the settings and under depth of field I'm going to set the focus to our text 
check what number it's text zero 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 so that and then I will increase this to or switch it to f stop and I think that's good so now our um, wood floor doesn't end with a sharp ending it sort of fades and blurs as it goes towards the end and that's pretty good so now I'm just going to render this out and I'll come back once again after it's done rendering alright so it's done rendering and I'm pretty happy with the results we created some nice text and colorful Easter eggs with a nice design made entirely in blender and we also created a cute little chicken for our Easter scene so I'm happy with the results I hope you are too uh, please comment share your results with me and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials feel free to leave them in the comments as well thanks for watching Happy Easter!